Hi and welcome to this lesson where in it we are going to have a look at solving linear inequalities. Okay, so what is a linear inequality? Well, first of all, it is an inequality which means it has a sign like this, okay, or that, or maybe like this, or that. Okay, so it can take any one of the inequality signs, gr uh, smaller than or equal to, greater than or equal to, smaller than, greater than, any one of the equality sides, signs. It has a left-hand side and a right-hand side. And on the left-hand side and right-hand side, we have expressions. And the condition of these expressions are that they are constant terms, constant terms, or terms with an unknown with power 1. Unknown with power one. Okay, so let me give a basic example. So we have an unknown x. It might have a coefficient c. So the coefficient isn't unknown for now. It is, but it's going to be a number. And then there is some constant term. Let's say k. This would be a basic idea of what one of the signs would look like. Then we'd have a sign like smaller than or equal to just smaller than or just greater than or greater than or equal to one of these four signs we would have and then we'd have another expression like this on the other side or we might okay another expression like that let's call it dx plus m whatever anything where okay d and m are unknown for the moment but um, but we'll only have our one unknown let's say that is x and what we're trying to do is find what must what values can we use for x so that this expression will be whatever this is uh, compared to that expression so what must x take so that this expression would be smaller than that expression or greater than that expression okay so how it's going to work is it works almost exactly almost exactly like equations okay so in a linear equation you remember our aim is to get x alone or our unknown get our unknown alone that's still going to be the same idea and we're still going to use the exact same methods of doing that and let me just quickly show you that it is indeed true I can as, as I can do anything on this side and on as long as I do it on the other side as well I can do anything on the left hand side as long as I do it on the right hand side but there's one little difference but let me quickly show you let's say we say that 2 is less than 3 we know that that is true so if I were to add let's say I add 6 I add 6 to both sides or let's actually make this 2 is less than four that's a bit better okay now let's say I add six now my answer is eight on the left hand side so let's say I add six on the other side as well my answer is ten is it still true that eight is smaller than ten yes it is okay so I'm allowed to add anything on the left hand side as long as I add it on the right hand side and there's no difference it's still true that the left hand side is smaller than the right hand side okay how about if I subtract so let's subtract 10 uh, actually let's subtract something 16 why not okay let's subtract 16 from both sides okay will it still be true that the left hand side is smaller than the right hand side well let's see 8 minus 16 gives me negative 8 10 minus 16 gives me negative 6 is it true that negative 8 is smaller than negative 6 well let's see okay of course it is Okay, negative 8 is smaller than negative 6. It's further along to the left on my number line. Okay, so we can add and subtract without needing to change the sign. Let's look at uh, multiply. Okay, let's multiply. Hmm, what can we multiply with? Let's multiply both sides with 6. Okay, if I multiply this side with 6. Okay, so negative 8 gets multiplied with 6. And my answer is negative 48. Negative 6 multiplied with 6 is negative 36. 
Is it still true that negative 48 is smaller than negative 36? Yes, it is. Okay, so I am mul I'm allowed to multiply both sides with a number without needing to change the sign. Okay, how about dividing with a number? Let's divide with 3. Let's divide both sides with a 3. Okay, so negative 48, uh, 3 goes into 48 16 times. And since it was negative, it still is negative 16 times. 3 goes into 36, negative 12 times into negative 36. Is it still true that 16 is smaller, negative 16 is smaller than negative 12? It is still true. Okay, negative 16 is less than negative 12. Okay, so so far we've added a number, a positive number, we've added a negative number, we've multiplied with positive numbers, and we've divided with positive numbers. What we haven't done so far is we haven't multiplied with a negative number. Okay, so let's quickly multiply with a negative number and see what happens. Let's multiply with the number 10, well, negative 1, why not? Let's just multiply with an easy one, negative 1. Now my answer is 16. Because negative times negative, negative always changes the sign. So on both sides I now get 16 and the other one is 12. Is it still true that 16 is smaller than 12? No, it's not. 16 is indeed now larger than 12. So here's the first thing that is different. Okay, When multiplying with a negative the sign swaps the sign swaps around okay so instead of being a smaller than it becomes a greater than let's see if that's true for dividing as well let's divide with negative 2 divide with negative 2 now 16 divided by negative 2 is equal to negative 8 12 divided by negative 2 is equal to negative 6 is it still true that negative 8 is larger than negative 6? No, negative numbers are in the opposite direction. So a negative number, a large negative number is smaller than a, than a, a, a less large positive number or a bigger, smaller positive number. So this needs to go out, okay, and that needs to be smaller than. So look what happens again, okay, it used to be a sign to the right okay now it turns to a sign to the left again okay so in other words again it swapped around the moment I multiplied with a negative okay so not just when multiplying but also when dividing with a negative the sign swaps around well why is that well I can briefly give you at least my understanding okay is that the moment I multiply with a negative okay I go to the opposite side of, sorry, that should be 2. The moment, if I'm here, if I'm on this positive side of my number line, then, of course, 1 is less than 2 is less than 3, like that. But once I multiply with a negative, all of a sudden I'm on this side of the number line, and now negative 3 is less than negative 2. 2 is less than negative 1. So do you see they swapped around? Okay. They swapped around. So since we keep our sides, we don't turn our sides in opposite direction. Uh, we have to change our sign in opposite direction. So for example, if I had 1 and 2, I know it would be like this. But on the number line, it should be negative 2 and 1 to keep my sign. This, uh, sorry, negative 1. Okay. So in other words, I if I multiply or divide, I should either swap my sides around or easier is probably just to swap your sign around. Okay, so that is the only thing that is different when we're solving linear inequalities is we will still use exactly the same ideas, okay, by trying to get our x alone. The only difference would be is that when we multiply or divide with a negative number, Okay, let's say negative number. Then this, oh. 
then the sine swaps around. The sine or sides. One of the two, not both, because then you have the same thing. One of the two. Okay, so in my next couple of videos, I'll look at a few examples uh, of how to do this or uh, just how this is applied, and you'll see it's really not very difficult. Our steps would simply be to simplify both sides and then follow the same, pro same process we would to solve equations. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and uh, good luck in attempting some of these on your own.